All right. Well, welcome to our Clinical Edge webinar. Today, we're talking about healthy habits, and we are so glad you could join us as we talk about the important role that habits play in our lives and the strategies um, that we can use to build new habits. I'm Dr. Cindy Morris, and I'm the Clinical Director at the Behavioral Health and Wellness Program at the University of Colorado and she's Medical Campus. And I'm Kathleen Morera. I'm a clinical associate with the Behavioral Health and Wellness Program. We're glad you joined us today. And so our intention for our time together today is to really explore those strategies that can help you to develop and sustain um, the he healthy habits that you want. And so for some of the activities that we have planned, um, you'll need a piece of paper and something to write with. So if you don't have it right now, please go and get it. And then, um, and then we'll begin with a centering exercise. All right, so we are going to practice a breathing technique called box breathing. And we'll talk through it together um, before we start, and then I will lead you through it. And so with box breathing, we will inhale for a count of four. We'll hold our breath for four. We'll exhale for a count of four and hold our breath for a count of four. And again, I'll take you through it. Um, you may want to close your eyes or just look down at your lap as we go through. All right, let's, let's begin. Okay, and inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Take a moment to really note how you feel and bring yourself back into the room. Thanks so much, Kathleen. Now, before we jump into our conversation about habits, let's uh, talk about the eight dimensions of wellness. So as you can see at the center here, it's just the core of our being is our emotional and physical wellness. And then we have financial, intellectual, and occupational. And then more broadly, um, we have social, environmental, and spiritual. And as you know, each of these dimensions is important. And the way that we function in any one dimension can affect how we function in another. And so it makes it really essential for us to be intentional about those aspects of our lives that really support our wellness across the eight dimensions. Okay. And the eight dimensions of wellness also remind us that Yes, there are multiple doors to wellness. And depending on what you need, your entry point into wellness will be different. And no matter where you start, the best entry point is usually the one that feels the easiest. And in fact, um, we want you to think about those seemingly inconsequential habits that you do every day or um, maybe even multiple times a day that can be those keystone habits that can change everything for you. And so um, that's why as you think about the healthy habits that you want to create in your life, 
really remember that positive change, the positive change that you make in one behavior can really start a tidal wave of momentum um, that can really transform your life. I learned how to choose the right. Oops. <laughs> All right. And now um, we have a quote from William James. All of our life, so far as it, it has definite form, is but a mass of habits. So William James is a philosopher and the first American psychologist, and he wrote this back in 1892. And given the research out there that we um, have on habits, we know that this statement is completely true. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in just a bit. And before we get too far into our conversation about habits, I'd like you to take a moment to think about um, those habits or routines that you engage in. And what's one unwanted habit that you'd like to change? So note that this habit um, may or may not be the one that you'll ultimately change. I just like you to have something in mind as we talk about the evidence base around habits. And um, then you can kind of play around with these concepts. And uh, if you would, we ask you to share uh, your unwanted habit with us in the chat. Of course, we are not here to shame or judge anyone, including ourselves. And so, um, because we know we all have unhealthy habits and a lot of them we learned really early on in our lives. And um, while at one point it might have worked for us, it may not work for us anymore. And it's just simply just encoded in our into our brains. So if you uh, would please share uh, with us in the chat, um, what's one unwanted habit you'd like to change? Yeah, so having uh, an irregular sleep schedule, um, eating too many pastries from the farmer's market on a regular basis, and sugar. Yes, I that, that certainly is one of them that's on my list as well. And then drinking wine after a workday. Thanks, everyone, for sharing. Okay. So now consider this from the moment you wake up in the morning, what do you do? Do you press the snooze button on your alarm? Do you get up immediately and exercise? Do you brush your teeth? Do you make coffee? And while we like to believe that all of our actions are a result of our conscious decision making, uh, we know um, from the research that what we do every day, about 40% of our behaviors are habits rather than um, conscious decisions that we make. And so let's talk a little bit more about habits. So we know that habits develop because our brain is always on the lookout for ways to be more efficient. OK, and so the less we can think about those simple activities um, and the more space and energy we have for complex brain functions. And this has helped humans to really evolve, be innovated, innovative and create the complex systems that make up our societies. So it's very useful in that way. And we know that our habits are stored in our basal ganglia. And that's the tiny structure in our brains um, that where we, um, it's really central to recalling patterns and acting on them, okay? And so uh, over time, as we engage in behaviors, such as brushing our teeth, our basal ganglia chunks these behaviors together, okay? So for example, uh, my alarm goes off in the morning and I reach over, turn it off, 
I sit up and put my feet on the floor, walk to the bathroom and I get my toothbrush out. I put toothpaste on the toothbrush. I uh, put it in my mouth, so on. All of those behaviors are automatic. I don't put any real conscious effort into these actions. And we also know that all habits at the most basic level are the result of a process um, that includes triggers or cues, the habitual behavior or the routine, and a reward. And this is called a habit loop. So let's take a closer look at each one of these. Okay, so we'll start with cues. And cues can be a visual trigger, such as candy in a colleague's candy bowl, a te television commercial about food, or maybe you're driving by a fast food restaurant on the way home, something like that. A cue can also be an emotional trigger. So it could be feeling bored or happy or anxious. And it can also be a sequence of thoughts. So I'm sure, I know you all have experienced those automatic thoughts that um, you can't really stop from happening or thinking. And these are so well-practiced that um, you think about them even if you don't want them or they aren't aligned with um, those conscious thoughts you really wanna think. So we've all had those. And we, as you know, it's very hard to change or control them once they've been activated. And then cues can also be found in our environment. So things like time of day, the people you're around, or even smells in your environment. And so I'll give you an example of um, something that I've been really aware of uh, since I began intermittent fasting. Um, I always, I find that it's hardest when I'm traveling or maybe in a different environment, like a, um, being in a work environment or something. Um, so I'll find that I'm not feeling hungry at all. And then suddenly, because I smell the food either coming from a restaurant at the airport or um, somebody at the office is heating up their lunch, suddenly I'm really hungry. And it's always so interesting to me because it's like just a few seconds before I wasn't hungry at all. And then now my stomach's growling. And it's interesting that it's really hard to distinguish whether, okay, am I hungry or is it just that um, I've had this cue that's triggered um, my hunger? All right, so depending on the cue, the routine or the habit itself can be behavioral, mental, or emotional. And once the routine is triggered, our brain just stops making those decisions. And because our habits are encoded into our basal ganglia, they don't ever disappear. And of course, they don't need our permission to appear. And sometimes they're so powerful that once the cue shows up, it is nearly impossible to stop the habit. And so you might want to think about those times when you have um, been in the middle of the action of an action that you didn't even intentionally start, or maybe weren't even aware that you were doing. And you did it because you had this neurologic craving that was triggered by the cue and you automatically took action to complete the habit loop. So once you've been triggered by events and people and emotions or any other number of environmental cues, you react in a way, in the routine, the habit, and that leads to a reward. And the reward itself can vary very greatly, you know? So it might be that you're seeking relief from some sort of negative experience, or maybe you're um, 
looking for a positive experience or maybe that others that are just there, you know, the reward is maintaining some sort of homeostasis. And for some really long standing habits, you know, uh, or even habits that have an aversive consequence, the reward may not be immediately obvious. Okay. Um, we know that sometimes behaviors, um, when a behavior started, there was some reward or maybe it achieved some goal that worked for you at the time um, that may not work for you now. And so when, as we're talking about these, um, these things, you really want to consider, um, hmm, what is my reward? And that may take a little thinking um, that's connected to the routine as you develop these new habits. Okay. So now let's look at an example, a really simple example of the habit loop. Okay. So imagine it's 2.50 in the afternoon and you've just finished a meeting or a session or appointment and you've been cued by the time of day. And then you go to your colleague's desk uh, where you know she keeps a um a candy bowl and you take a piece or two and while you're there you have a quick chat with your friend uh before you need to go to your next appointment so that is the routine and in this example there are quite a few possible uh rewards so one maybe that you get to um enjoy a visit with your friend Two, you know, you could feel energized by the sugar you've just consumed. Or three, you get a break from work or a break from, you know, being in your office, that kind of thing. And so let's dissect this example a little bit. So given what we know about habits so far, um, you may not have even been aware of the trigger. You, you know, you might have just felt restless and maybe wanted to walk around. And then suddenly you remember your colleague's candy bowl and you know that there are Reese's peanut butter cups in there and they are your personal favorite. And, um, and then you get to have a couple while you're talking with your friend. Um, and throughout this interaction, likely there wasn't even a conscious decision. It's just automatic. And so now that we understand the habit loop, we know that habits are automatic, they're persistent, they're independent of goals, and they're cued by context. And so you may be thinking, how can I ever hope to change my habits if they're out of my conscious control? And the good news is we do know a lot about habits and we can use this information to our advantage. And so while we can't eradicate old habits, they will forever be stored in your basal ganglia. They will always be there. We can build new ones. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna take a few minutes just to talk about some key ingredients that play an important role in building new habits. So for a habit to start and stay changed, you really need to believe that change is possible. And belief is also really helpful when the going gets tough, okay? And to give you a personal example, so both of my parents have type two diabetes and have really struggled uh, to manage their symptoms and their doctors haven't really been able to uh, offer them the support that they need. So I decided to help because I'm aware of the evidence that really shows that type two diabetes is reversible and it requires a significant lifestyle change, which can be a challenge. And so when I first began to talk with them about intermittent fasting and other lifestyle changes, while they were really open to it, they were kind of skeptical. 
Um, I think it was hard for them to believe that they could do it. Um, and they didn't also know if it would be worth it. Would it actually help? Would they um, have a, experience a decrease in their symptoms? And it wasn't until they began to practice this that, um, and they uh, experienced the reward of having decreased symptoms that they were really committed to engaging in these new behaviors. And they developed this real sense of belief in themselves and excitement. Oh gosh, you know, the last time I talked to, uh, with them about this, they were so thankful for my support. Um, and, you know, they're very sweet and telling me they couldn't do it without me. And, um, and to me, this is just an example um, that shows the power of belief through that experience and practice as well as the power of support from others. Um, as I always like to say, it's better together. Okay. And it also takes willpower to make a change and especially to change a habit, right? So um, the research tells, tells us that as we move through our day, our willpower decreases. So we have a limited amount of willpower each day. And so this makes sense. It probably matches your experience where uh, by the time you get to the end of your day, say you've had a really challenging day, when you get home, it's so hard to um, make those good choices, engage in those healthy habits that um, you had planned for yourself. And so this is why it's really important for us to um, set up in our environments in such a way so it doesn't overtax our willpower. Um, so it might be like somebody has brought in some sweet treat uh, that I in particular am susceptible to. And so if I have to walk past it 10 times a day on my way to the bathroom or to other meetings, it you know really can take a toll on my willpower. And so as you are practicing new behaviors, you might wanna think about doing them earlier in the day, especially if they're those new habits that you're wanting to incorporate. Um, so for example, if you want to increase your physical activity, it might be better to start practicing it earlier in the day uh, rather than later, because by the time you get home at the end of your day, you may not feel like going out and engaging in that behavior. And so even though willpower is limited, there are those things that we can do to strengthen our willpower, right? So activities that take persistence and willpower also can in increase it. So it might be things like having a um, having a really good intense workout or following a budget or um, engaging in good focusing or studying skills, really good work skills. Those behaviors can help us to strengthen our willpower. All right. And so another key aspect back to successfully building those healthy habits is small wins. So small win wins come when we take those manageable steps towards our goals. It's not the ultimate goal. It's those intermediary goals that we need to get to where we want to go. And these small wins um, involve persistence and practice because we know getting from one place to another, especially if it's someplace new and you haven't been there before, it is not a straight line from here to there, right? And um, it's really helpful for us to set intermediary goals, have those wins, um, collect that data and experiment, you know, to see what works best for you. Okay. And so next we have some activities to help you to clarify the healthy habits that you want to create. All right, thanks, Cindy. So we're going to start by considering our values. 
And values are important because they act as a guide to set, determine and set our life priorities and decisions. And of course, whether or not it's apparent to us, our values do guide our choices and our actions every day. And there is built-in incentive to remaining true to our values. It, it contributes to our sense of meaning for ourselves and just a greater sense of meaning in the world. And we know that living in a manner out of alignment with core values really can generate internal conflict within us. So that can be, that can be a cue for us. And so there's, of course, many influences that shape our, shape our values over time, and it is really useful to then define our values. We don't think about this very much, maybe. And when we are able to define our values, the knowledge that we gain provides useful information about what's important to us. Um, and that we know that knowing and prioritizing our values in our life can really help in three ways. It helps us prioritize how we want to spend time and our resources. It helps us bring clarity to our decision-making process. And it really can be useful and helpful when we are working on resolving tension in conflictual situations. And so given this, knowing that it's really important for us to define our values for ourselves, we want to give you a little time and space to do that. So as you scan this list, we want you to think about the values that are most important to you. Um, thinking about what are the values that are essential to your life. And so we are asking that you choose three values, top three values. And of course, if you're seeing a value that is important to you that you're not seeing listed here, of course, add that. And as you're identifying your top values, um, we'd love to just uh, have you share them in the chat so that we can see what values are important to you or the at core of who you are. Um, so as you're looking at that. And some, some questions to consider as you're looking at this list. So you're thinking about your top values. You want to think about what is it that makes them important to you? You also want to think about how do you see these values reflected in your everyday life? Another important question to consider is, you know, really asking yourself, are there any ways in which you aren't living in alignment with your top values? And in particular, um, that may have something to do with that unwanted habit that maybe you identified. Um, another thing to consider that if you're out of alignment with your top values, how might you better integrate your values into your daily habits? And so as you've been considering those questions, hopefully you have uh, been able to identify your three top values. And now in our next step, we are going to ask you of those three to identify your top value. What is your top value? Please share your top value with us in the chat. Family. Joy. Family. Love, learning, honesty, thanks all. So we have a couple of uh, people who share their same top value. There's some difference. And in being able to identify those, we want you to keep that top value with you as we're moving into identifying a new habit that you want to incorporate into your life. Thanks for sharing, everybody. Okay, 
So now we're going to bring the circles menu into our conversation. Some of you may be familiar with the circles menu. It, um, it originates from motivational interviewing and has become a tool used to facilitate the behavior change pro process across modalities. And so what we know about circles menus is that they are a really cool strategy to help people clarify and focus your agenda. So it's really, it's an experiential and creative way of getting clarity. And it really frees us from that to-do list mindset, meaning um, inherent in making a to-do list, you're putting what you think you should be doing right at the top. And so therefore you're already uh, sort of rating what's what should get your attention. And so when we can kind of back up and see it in circles, then it really allows us to be put down what is it that we're wanting to work on um, and see it from a broader perspective. And so as you're thinking about the different habits you engage in that maybe you want to change, there might be a couple that are in the forefront of your mind. So you're seeing here, we filled in, you know, eating dessert after dinner, binging shows late into the night, allowing dirty laundry to pile up, sleeping through my alarm in the morning. And so just some suggestions. Right now, though, we're going to ask you to take that piece of paper that you got at the beginning of the webinar, just put it in front of you and draw, you know, three to five circles on it. In those circles, we'd like you to write down um, the, all the behaviors or habits that you think you might want to change, that you might want to work on. And we really encourage you to be specific with what habit you want to change. So rather than saying, um, you know, spend, I'm spending too much money, you might want to say something like um, online shopping or eating takeout four nights a week. So we'll give you a minute here to um, fill in your circles with with habits that you may want to change. All right, so hopefully you have a couple things written down. Um, and looking at your circles menu, often really just taking a look at that can help us prioritize what is it that is most important for, for me to work on for myself right now. And so looking at your circles menu, choose one habit that you'd like to focus on right now. All right, so we have identified a habit through our um, really identifying our top value and a habit that we'd like to change through the circles menu. And there are also some evidence-based strategies that we know can really help build new habits. Um, so the first one, of course, Cindy talked about this. You're really wanting to pay attention to those cues. You want to identify the contextual cues that can be that trigger for the habits. And so when you can do that, you increase your awareness of when those cues are showing up. You have a choice about maybe limiting your exposure to those cues. Um, and then you also can then increase the likelihood that you can replace the unwanted habit with the wanted habit. The next strategy is to practice behaviors that challenge unhelpful beliefs. Okay, so what we mean by that is that uh, we're encouraging you to test your beliefs about things um, by engaging in experiments or observations that challenge those beliefs. So let's just, if you were to say, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm just a couch potato. 
we encourage you to test that belief maybe by then um, saying yes to the next time your partner asks you to go for a walk or um, getting co uh, calling a friend and getting coffee or organizing a, uh, a kitchen drawer. Um, or, you know, some people may say, I'm just, I'm stressed all the time. So we encourage you to really challenge that belief by maybe doing things like practicing the deep breathing, the box breathing that we did at the top of the webinar, um, playing with your kids or your grandkids, uh, taking a bath or watching a comedy, something like that. And the third strategy, uh, Cindy talked about this, is to strengthen that willpower muscle. So we all have it. And the more that we strengthen it, the stronger it gets and the more that it serves us, of course, in creating and maintaining habits. So you're wanting to engage in activities that build your willpower. So really it's about practicing, persisting at things that you may have given up on in the past. So make those mistakes, like make the mistakes, learn from them and then keep going. And it really will help you succeed and build that willpower. And then substituting wanted behaviors for unwanted behaviors. So we're replacing that routine or habit with a wanted behavior associated with that same cue and that same reward. And we're, we're going to practice this here in our next activity. Um, there is an opportunity that we have at different points in our lives where we can really take advantage of mo big moments of change in our life. So when you're on vacation, you may feel like, um, you know, you're able to do things differently. And that's because the context has changed. And so you are able to shift your habits more easily. So whether you're um, on vacation or moving into a new house, starting a new job or starting maybe a new relationship, we want you to capitalize on the opportunity to practice new behaviors because these changes can really act as a catalyst. You're wanting to utilize and harness that energy to really become the person that you want to be. And of course, practice, practice, practice. Um, you know, studies show we know that repetition is really an important part of habit formation, you know, and it, it depends on the person uh, for how long it takes to form a new habit. So, so that does depend on the person. But the more practice you get, the more automatic that behavior becomes. And so, of course, you often hear people saying, you know, practice makes perfect. And I will say that as a recovering perfectionist, um, I like to instead say practice makes progress. All right. So now we, we as a group are going to create our healthy new habit. And so before we're working on our individual habits, we're just going to quickly review the habit that Cindy took us through so we can remind ourselves of how this works. All right. So with the example she gave us, the cue was the time of day, which was 2.50 p.m. The routine was going and stopping at the coworker's candy bowl. And the rewards, we had a couple different rewards. So we got time with our coworker, our friend. Um, we got, uh, you know, a little energy from the sugar. And we got a break from work. Okay, so those are our cue, routine, and reward. Now on your piece of paper, you can turn it over or, or whatever. You're wanting to make two different columns. One column has the old habit and the other column has the new habit. So for each of those, you've got your cue, your routine and your reward. So right now, the old habit, write down what is the cue? What is that old habit or that routine? And what is the current, what are the rewards? from practicing that old habit and there and there may be many okay so now you've got your old habit we are going to transfer over the cue from the old habit to the cue for the new habit so go ahead and write that in And then we're also going to copy over the reward or rewards that you identified from the old habit to the new habit. 
So go ahead and write those in. And now it's about considering and coming up with a new habit or routine that you want to link to the same cue and reward, right? So remember that we can't get rid of old habits. We can only replace them. So we are using the same cue, the same reward. What is our new routine or habit? And it takes practice to, to do this and to be able to clarify. Just do the best you can with what you know about this right now. And then as you're ready, um, we'd love for you to share your new cue, routine, and reward with us in the chat. All right, Q, 2.30 p.m. routine was to get coffee, and now it's to go for a five-minute walk. Reward, a break from work and a reason to stand up. Thank you so much. What a solid example. Um, we're wishing you luck as you're practicing that new habit. Thanks for sharing that with us. Anyone else like to share their Q routine and reward with us? All right, we're going, we'll move forward, but as that comes to you, or if, if you're wanting to share, please pop that in the chat for us. Okay, so from our conversation today, you know about the habit loop now, you know about the cues, the routine, and the reward, and that while we can't eradicate our habits, we can build new habits that are stronger than the old ones. And we know that you all want to live healthy, intentional lives that include that conscious choice to build healthy habits that support and nourish you. And so you'll want to be a detective really and collect data about the many cues and of the routines and rewards in your life. And as you're investigating, you know, how is this working for me? You'll become more aware. You'll uh, be better able to engage in those behaviors that align with your values. You'll strengthen that willpower muscle and you'll be able to maximize your opportunities for change. And so as you're building new healthy habits, you really create a momentum that makes it easier then to make changes across the eight dimensions that Cindy talked about earlier today. So we're excited to see what you'll create for yourselves. All right, we've got one final activity. So you all have identified a healthy habit, but there are different steps that we can take beforehand often to maybe even before we make that change. So what, what is it that we might need to do prior to making the change or you might be ready to make the change now? So regardless of where you're at, we want you to consider the statement stem and complete it. The first step I want to take towards my new habit is complete the stem. And again, if you feel comfortable, please share that with us in the chat. Reaching. Okay, reaching out to invite a friend to the farmer's market. Thank you. All right, and we've got an example of a queue. So the queue is Saturday farmer's market. Um, the pastry reward and the, having the pastry as the reward, it feels good versus Saturday farmer's market, meet up with a different friend each Saturday, reward feels good. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. 
So yes, yeah, so we want to have a different friend, but this first step then would be reaching out to invite that friend or making sure that you're getting that on your calendar before the Saturday arrives. Well, thanks so much you all for joining us for our Healthy Habits webinar. If you're wanting uh, additional information, you can visit our website. Um, and we're just so happy uh, to be with you today and hope that in considering uh, old habits and the power of, of replacing them with new habits, that um, you have some, some good change for yourselves this summer. Thanks, you all. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. We've got our uh, evaluation link in the chat. If you don't mind clicking that um, before you jump off, we do appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.